So far in this section, we have learned a lot about routes in Angular. We learned how to define and use a route, how to read route parameter values, query string values, fragments, etc. And we also talked about child routes. Now, when we are working with routes, sometimes we might want to execute some logic before navigating the user to or away from the route. For example, not all the routes of our application should be accessible to everyone. We might want to protect some of the routes from unauthorized users. Only a logged in user should be able to access certain routes. Or let's say a user has edited his profile, but without saving those changes, he tries to navigate to other page. In that case, our application might want to get confirmation from the user if he wants to save his changes before navigating away, instead of navigating the user right away. And for such scenarios, Angular provides us with something called as route guards. So in this lecture, we will have a high level overview of what route guards are in Angular and what are the different types of route guards. We use Angular route guards to control whether the user can navigate to a route or navigate away from a route based on a given condition. In simple words, Angular route guards helps us secure the route or to perform some action before navigating into a route or leaving the route. We can use Angular route guards in different scenarios. For example, we can use Angular route guards to restrict a user from accessing a protected route. Or we can also use a route guard to ask user to save changes before moving away from the route view. We can also use route guards for validating the route parameters before navigating to the route. Or we can also use a route guard to fetch some data before you display the component view of the route to the user. So these are some of the use cases where we can use a route guard. Now in Angular, we have five route guards. So let's talk about each of them one by one. So first of all, we have the can activate route guard and can activate child route guard. So the can activate and can activate child route guard is used to allow or restrict a user from navigating to a route. And the most common use case where we can use a can activate route guard is when we want to protect a route from unauthorized access. In the same way, the common use case when we want to use can activate child route guard is when we want to protect the child routes from the unauthorized access. So we have learned how to configure our routes and navigate to different parts of our application using Angular routes. But allowing the user to navigate to all parts of our application is not a good idea. And we need to restrict the user from accessing certain routes until the user performs a specific action like logging into the application. And we can use can activate or can activate child route guard for protecting a route from unauthorized access. Then we have can deactivate route guard. You can use can deactivate route guard on a route if you want to control when a user can navigate away from the current route. For example, let's say in our Angular application, we have an edit form where user can edit his details. So the user has edited his details, but before saving the changes, the user is trying to navigate away. In this case, we do not want to allow user to navigate right away. Instead, first we will inform user that he has unsaved changes and if he really wants to navigate away without saving these changes. If the user confirms that he wants to navigate away, we will allow user to navigate away. Otherwise, we will keep the user in the same route and we will cancel the navigation. This can be achieved using can deactivate route guard. Using this route guard, we can allow or restrict a user from navigating away from the current route. Then we also have resolve route guard. This route guard delays the activation of the route until some task is complete. And the common use case where we can use this resolve route guard is when we want to prefetch some data from a backend API before activating the route. And we will understand this with an example in our coming lectures. And finally, we also have the can load route guard. The can load route guard prevents the loading of the lazy loaded modules. We generally use this route guard when we do not want to unauthorized users to be able to even see the source code of the module. Now in this section, except this can load route guard, you will learn about other route guards and their use in great detail with practical examples in our coming lectures. In order to understand can load route guard, we need to have the basic understanding of modules in Angular. So we will not cover the can load route guard in this section, but we will learn about the can load route guard in great detail when we will talk about Angular modules in one of the sections of this course. 
So this was a high level overview of what route guards are in Angular and what are the different route guards Angular provides and we use which route guard for what purpose. Now in the latest versions of Angular that is from Angular 15 and in higher versions Angular has provided a new way of implementing route guards in Angular. Till Angular 14 in order to implement a route guard we used to inherit route guard specific interface for the service class and provide the implementation of its method. For example Till Angular 14, what we used to do is we used to create a service class. That service class should inherit from an interface based on which route guard you want to use. For example, if you want to use can activate route guard, in that case, your service class should inherit from can activate interface. Then it should also provide the implementation of the method which can activate interface provides. And then that method should return a Boolean value or some data based on what route guard you're using and then we need to assign that service class which is inheriting from a route guard interface to the route guard property of the route object so when we define a route we define a route using a route object that route object will have properties like can deactivate can activate can activate child resolve and can load so based on which route guard you want to use you need to assign that particular service to the route guard property of route object. Now, don't worry if this does not make any sense right now because we are going to understand practically in our coming lectures. Now, from Angular 15, Angular has introduced more functional approach to implement route guards and the old interface approach, it has been deprecated. So now, from Angular 15, in order to create a route guard, we no more need to create a service class and implement the route guard service. Instead, we can simply create a function and that function should have the logic of what we want to do with that route guard and we need to assign that function to the route guard property of route object. So as you can see, till Angular 14 and lower versions, we need to follow these four steps. But from Angular 15, all we have to do is we have to create a function and we need to assign that function to the route guard property of route object. And again, if this does not make any sense right now, don't worry, we are going to understand it practically in our coming lectures. But just keep in mind that the interface approach of creating a route guard has been deprecated in Angular 15 and higher versions. We can still use it, but it is deprecated. All right, so from the next lecture, let's learn what is the use of each of the route guards, which we have just seen in this lecture and how we can implement them in Angular 14 and lower versions and also in Angular 15 and higher versions.